and welcome to another episode of Seven Questions With, brought to you by Jersey Mike's Be a Sub Above. Today, we're delighted to talk with the new head football coach at Wall High School, Ed Guerrero. Yes, he's new to Wall. He is certainly not new to the Shore Conference. Uh, coach had uh, a very successful run at Manalapan High School, 13 seasons over a couple of 10 stints, uh, never had a losing season, uh, won, uh, I believe, five division titles, uh, got to the uh, sectional final six times, won it all in 2014, coach of the year, uh, member of the Shore Football Coaches Foundation Hall of Fame. He's been on the sidelines for a couple of years, but he comes back and jumps into a situation at Wall, which I would think most of our viewers have a little idea of what's happened there. And we'll we'll discuss that a little bit, only how it impacts him. But uh, Coach, it's really nice to talk football with you again after a couple of years. Always good talking ball with you, Kev. Absolutely. So tell me, you stepped down at Manal, but after 2019, um, and so that meant the last two falls, you were not directly involved in the game of football, at least in the short conference. So I know you have grandkids, but what did Ed Guerrero do to fill time on those uh, September and October weekends? Well, actually, the, the first year um, I was running up to Bayonne in, 20, in 2019 and helping them out. Uh, good friend of mine is a superintendent up there and uh, he asked if I could come up and give him a hand and we kind of helped him put a staff together. And we got Mike Bamonte to be the offensive coordinator. You know, remember he played for me and yep. he went to Rutgers and then he got a whole bunch of other Rutgers guys to come over and coach. So we had a good time that year. Uh, it was a COVID year. It was a little crazy, you know, with starting and stopping. And, uh, and then this past season uh, I sat out and I, I, I was helping Dom out a little bit, you know, he's like my little brother. <laughs> of course you're referring so, to Dom. Dom LaPore, who took over at Manalapan for you and was yes. your longtime coordinator there. Yes. So, uh, you know, a lot of behind the scenes stuff, helping, went to a couple of practices, tried not to get in anybody's way or step on anybody's toes or anything like that. But I, I could tell when I was out there a couple of times uh, that I still had the itch, that uh, I had a burning desire and uh, I was missing it. So the, the wall and... Listen, uh, everyone knows, I shouldn't say everyone, but most people who are going to watch this follow Shore Conference football, um, they've, they've been dealing with, I'll call it an ongoing uh, hazing situation. They're only an ongoing, and the, the investigation is not completed. Uh, but they lost their last at least two games of last year, a playoff game, and, of course, their Thanksgiving Day game with Mattis One. They were both canceled. Uh, sometime, I believe, in January, they posted the job opening. Were you looking for a job at that point, or was it a matter of that's one in which you said, boy, this would be a pretty good situation? Yeah, uh, I knew I wanted to coach again. I wasn't going to just jump at anything. Uh, there was some jobs that, that were available, and I, I didn't even bother uh, putting in for anything. This is the only job that I put in for. Put in for. Uh it kind of said, I kind of felt right from the get-go that I, I would feel it was going to be a good fit. And uh, up to this point, I, I, uh, my instincts, uh, I think, are correct. So um, when, you, when you did your first, I'll call it formal interview, when you sat down with the, with the committee, did you come out of there feeling pretty good that like this, I checked the boxes they're looking for and this checks the boxes I'm looking for? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first of all, they did an outstanding job uh, in the interview process with us. There were seven people in there when I went in there. You know, it, 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 it was very thorough. Um, and, uh, you know, all the questions were right on point. And I felt like, um, you know, I, I was straight with them. I said, at this point in time, you know, um, everybody that's going to come in here is going to tell you the same things I'm going to tell you how to build a program and how to do this and how to do that. You know, everybody has the same ideas. I said, but I don't know if you're going to get anybody that's done it. Like I've done, I've done it. I've been there and done that. I know what you guys need. I know you have good football players here. You have a good community, a good support system. And I see a lot of similarities with Manalpin and uh, I think I would be the right guy. Now, um, and I'm not asking for any inf inside information here, but, obviously what they had and what they are dealing with did that come into play in terms of them asking you questions about how you would avoid these things happening in the future well i mean they always want to know uh, what your plan is 
uh, you know, it's real simple. You, you know, you're going to try to create a culture uh, where these things don't happen. Number one, where um, you know people will police themselves, but also number two, knowing what's going on here, you know, you don't leave anybody unsupervised for a second. You know, that's that's what you got. That's that's what you're dealing with. And uh, so that's the situation I've been dealt and, and we'll go about it that way. Uh, but, you know, it, 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 it's, it was a, it, it was like the perfect storm. I, I don't know much that would happen there, but COVID, you know, has some, some a play in it. Uh, you know, the, the way kids went in and out of locker rooms, all that stuff. It's neither here nor there. It, it's water under the bridge now. Uh, we want to move forward. I'm going to instill, install my plan and hopefully, uh, after they've been around me long enough, they'll get to trust me like the Manalapan kids did and, and they'll understand uh, what we're trying to accomplish. With the success you had at Manalapan and knowing you, you are not going to jump into a program that you don't feel there's any commitment to be successful. So despite what's happened there, listen, Wall has been as good a public school football program as there's been in the state of New Jersey over the past three or four years. Do you still yeah. feel, do you still feel from the administration and from the people you talk to in the community, that there's a commitment there, like we want to have a winning football program. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, it, it's it's a great community. Uh, uh, the people are excited. Uh, the administration, uh, we have the full backing of the administration. Uh, they want to see the kids succeed. Um, the parents want to see the kids succeed, but we also want to see them do it in the right way and 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 and, and straighten out some things. And uh, I think we could do that. I wouldn't have taken the job if I thought that, uh, you know, that football was not going to be a priority. Let's put it that way. Where are you at here as we sit here in uh, in, in relatively early or mid March? Where are you at in terms of building a coaching staff? And are you able to? Will you be able to have anyone that's in the building as a full-time teacher at this point, part of that staff, or you're going to have to just reach outside? Um, probably going to have to reach outside. You know, unfortunately, um, anybody who was on the previous staff will not be retained. Right. So, uh, you know, as far as now, as far as now. Right. Um, I have not spoken to any other uh, teachers in the building who might be coaches who weren't coaching at that particular time. But as of now, uh, I have a good amount of the guys that were with me at Ben Alpin. Uh, when I stepped away, a few of them had already stepped away. So uh, I would say we have about 80% of the staff in place and uh, most of them with me at Ben Alpin. Now you've already met with, I say met with players. You obviously had an initial meeting with players when you were hired and as we are speaking, you're already into your off-season weight program, in which I'm sure you see some of these guys on a fairly regular basis. How's that going? Uh, great. I mean, these kids are hungry. They they want to turn the page. They want to move forward. They want to get back to normalcy. Um, so they're they're in the gym and they're working hard. And uh, um, I, like I said, I don't. They, they're they're a tough, hard-nosed group, and um, they're getting after it. So I'm, I'm I'm pleased so far with the results. Wall, uh, Wall was, was, uh, had a pretty good team last year, this past season, lost a couple games early, uh, and then rebounded, went on a pretty nice run. But if I look at the roster, most of their top players last year, at least from a layman's term like me, most yeah. of their top players are seniors who will be graduating. Um, would you classify, I know coaches hate this word, is next season kind of a rebuilding year or does that not word not, is not not part of your dialogue. Uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't like the word rebuilding at all. <laughs> I don't like the word rebuilding at all. I, I I've already told the kids that are in there working out like why not us? You know why not us? There's uh, they've been successful. You know a lot of times you have to learn how to win first, and they already know how to win. You know you take a program that's been down and and you got to turn it around. They have to learn how to win. These guys already know how to win. Uh, they've been successful at every level from the AYF, which is their AYF program is terrific. I've met a lot of those guys. They're great guys. They do a tremendous job down there. So, you know, at every age group and every level, they've been fine. They've been really good. So, um, you know, even though uh, they've graduated a really good group of seniors, uh, I believe that the guys that are left, uh, we put them in the right spots. We'll be successful. The, uh, 
the schedule makers have not done you any favors. Uh, <laughs> they have not said, well, listen, you know what? Well, obviously when they made the schedule, you were not the coach, but they, they didn't hand you uh, a, a silver platter. Uh, you're in the American division, um, which and clearly to most football people's mind is the premier division in the shore conference, certainly one of the top two. Uh, along with the likes of Rumson, Donovan Catholic, RBC, Middletown South, and by the way, your former school, Manal. But then there's that little Thanksgiving Day game with Manasquan, which is always a piece of cake. Can you win with everything the program has been through? Can, can there be a successful fall for the Crimson Knights? And what will Ed Guerrero define as success, or is that still to be determined? Uh, that's still to be, still to be determined. I, 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 you know, we, we got a long way to go, you know, in our evaluation process, but if they work the way they've been working, uh, we'll figure it out. We'll be okay. Is it going to be a tough schedule? A absolutely. Absolutely. But you know what, if we make it through alive, <laughs> we'll be battle tested for when the States come around. That's for sure. You know, we'll be battle tested and we'll be ready to go. What will football fans or wall followers say about the team you put on the field next fall? Like at, at the end, what will they say about the Wall Crimson Knights of 2022? We, we, we're going to have an identity. You know, my teams, have, you know, wherever I've been, we've had an identity. Uh, we're going to run the football. We're going to stop the run. And then we're going to try to throw the ball over your head. We're going to be disciplined. We're not going to hurt ourselves. If you're going to win the game, you're going to have to beat us. We're not going to beat ourselves. We're not going to have mistakes. Uh, we're not going to have penalties and uh, we're going to do everything we can uh, to play the game the right way. Uh, and um, I, I, like I said, I, I think there's enough good players left, even though they, they lost a good group. I think there's enough players that are, uh, that are in place to say like, you know, why not us? Hey, and at least this red and white are still your colors. If, if, if you're standing on the opposite sideline, the W looks like an M. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's an upside down M. So, uh, you know what? The colors are almost the same. Uh, I was laughing. I have so much stuff that I had to box up and put away. But my wife just says we need another house for all the Manalapan gear I had to get rid of. But uh, it is what it is. Ed, you are a true gentleman. Uh, I have loved the interactions we've had in the past. And I'm really excited to have you back at the shore where you belong uh, coaching football. And I think uh, those associated with the wall school and community will be even happier uh, that you're the guy in charge. I wish you nothing but the best. We'll crank it up soon and we'll be chatting again, but uh, thanks for your time and uh, uh, great to have you back at the shore. Thanks, Kev. I appreciate it. Good seeing you. Ed Guerrero, the new football coach, head football coach at wall high school. He joins us on seven questions with, it's been brought to you by Jersey Mites. Be a sub above.